Oh, hey there, guys. I just woke up. Not really. I woke up about 30 minutes ago. Just having me a, a little coffee. Just drinking a coffee. And uh, what do you guys think of this? Eh? What do you guys? What do you guys think of my 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 smoking rig setup for today? The I Taste VTR. Yup. Packing the dirty old octopus. Oh yeah. Friggin' the only mod I have here that'll, or the regulated mod I should say that'll sub ohm. What sub ohming? Sub ohming is awesome. No, not really, but kind of, sort of. It's pretty sweet. Oh, got a fart. Oh, that might have been a poop, but uh, this is what I'm going to be using today. Either that or the Nemesis, not sure. I might go with the Nemesis. But uh, yeah, I need to find bigger batteries for it, that's for sure. Because these 2000 milliamp batteries do not last long in the VTR. Oh, indeed. Like last night I got home and I uh, configure this thing here. I throw uh, the octopus onto it, you know, dripped into it. Put a fresh friggin' 2000 milliamp hour battery into it. And then I started tooting on it while I was barbecuing, came in the house. I was freaking ate my food and tooting on it afterwards and already 50% power. Like, no good. No good. Battery doesn't last in this one bit. I need to find a bigger battery. And Panasonic makes one that's 3400 ma or milliamp hours or whatever. Uh, that would probably resolve my problem with this thing here not lasting long. But there is a lot of shit in this thing. That's why it is the way it is. Uh, it's a heavy brick. Like, it literally, you can tell when you're holding it that there's something in your hand. And you can tell when it's in your pocket that there's something in your pocket because freak sakes this thing's heavy but it works of course I have a fan going right beside me so the vapes not gonna like linger it's gonna like you know diffuse it and atomize it better and stuff but whatevs whatevs well I don't know how well anybody can see out there so we'll crack open the window and show you um probably noticed a little bit of snow in my car and it's all wet and everything's all wet well it's a miserable day out today people Oh, there's my old furnace filter. But Dad said he was going to put it in the garage, not throw it on the ground outside the house. Oh, shit. I'm going to have to go take care of that. But, uh, yeah, it's like right there. It, uh, it looks pretty nasty. Oh, well. But, yeah, it's a miserable friggin' day outside today. That much is for sure. They actually have a request out right now from the uh, Ontario Provincial Police requesting people avoid driving anywhere today. If you can have the option to stay home, stay home. Well, unfortunately, Mr. Police Officer, I need to go to work. I've been sick enough this year for frig's sakes, so I need to go to work and actually get some working done and things. So that's what I'm gonna do. Today, we're going to work, frig it. And tonight, well, We'll see what happens. Just gonna go with the flow, people. Go with the flow. So, yeah, I was uh, watching Pug One's video there uh, a couple days ago about some big, 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 big race for May 2 for a weekend in Inwoods. Yeah, I need to chat with Bloke there and find out if he's doing anything for May 2 for a weekend. And if not, if he wants company, I need to talk to my parents, see if they can watch the dog. And as for the cat, well, maybe if I make Cat Food Mountain, I'll only be gone for three days, like Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Come, well, I'll be leaving Friday night when I get off work. Drive down there at midnight, come get the Blokes Saturday friggin' Sunday and then I'll come back Monday sometime and then uh, go from there. I mean, I'd like to go down but uh, we'll have to see what happens, see if I can actually pull it off. But it would be pretty awesome to go down and visit Bloke and, and everything again because like I miss that guy man. Bloke's friggin' hilarious to hang out with. That, now that we both have the cigarettes and on the vapor we both got different equipment you know we can talk vape shop and we can have like you know all sorts of friggin' vape talk and stuff and maybe when I go to Pugs maybe he'll have me on the THC channel. Wouldn't that be something eh? I don't know, maybe. It'd probably be kind of interesting. I don't know what I do on there. I, I don't really use medicinals, but uh, I guess I could vape while he chatches. Maybe uh, take a look at his butter ball and see how the coils are built and maybe figure out if he can rebuild them or not because, like he said, he paid 10 bucks. I think he said 10 bucks for five coils or something like that. And meanwhile, like, like a roll of canthal, like this here roll here is, is 10 feet of canthal, and I only paid three bucks for this roll of canthal. And because that butter ball, the way it works, it doesn't have a wick because it's burning solids, it's not burning liquid. Um, all he needs is canthal, and I just need to look at the coil to see how it's built, and then I can tell him, okay, this, this technique might work. Like, for instance, this bit here, this is the what the soldering bit for my, my new blowtorch, right? Well, apparently, this is what people are using to make the stove coils for their dry herb atomizers. This, this tip, because what what it looks like is it li literally looks like a coil top on a stove. It's all spiraled. So what you do is you wrap it around the uh, 
the, the cone, and then you basically freaking put a book on top of it when you're done. So instead of having it spiraling up like a spring, you want it flat. So you just put a heavy book onto it and let it sit there for a while, and gradually it like let it sit there for 24 hours, and then it'll be flat. And if it's not flat, then what you do is you get yourself a great big pair of channel locks that can pinch it flat. You do that and you apply direct heat with a torch and it will no longer ever want to be bouncy again. So that's kind of cool. I, I kind of like that. And uh, I'm thinking that uh, making those coils could be kind of easy. But I don't know what his, his butterball uses for a coil. If it uses a spiral coil, if it uses a stove tops coil, if it uses, uh, like you might, you might be able to go like right crazy with the coil. Or it could be even worse and you can't replace the coil because the coil is built into the ceramic making it impossible to replicate so i don't know I've got to take a look at it and see that's because bloke was talking about it on the thc that oh we could just build you some more coils and either a increase the resistance because if you have a variable voltage variable waters device running 1.5 2 ohms 3 ohms not a big deal you can just pin the wattage or you know, pin the voltage and and get that power to the coil and it'll produce just as good as a, a vape apparently I always run my coils at 1.3 on my regulated devices and 0.6 on my mechanical mods, but whatevs, you know, whatever. To each their own. Right now there's a competition going on on the uh, freaking juice junkies. People are like freaking cloud chasing like big time, trying to get the title Cloud King. Meanwhile, I'm just sitting here vaping and watching them all be fools because honestly, 0.6 puts enough vapor in my mouth where I'm happy. And at 6 milligrams of e-liquid, it's like taking a toot off of an 18 again because that's kind of ridiculous you kind of don't need to go that crazy but it's nice it's nice when you when you get up in the morning and you're having that that nicotine craving it takes a while for it to kick in with me but when it does you know the best way to get rid of it is just a mouthful of vape and I just grab the nemesis and crank on that and I'm freaking ready to rock for the day so that's a good thing indeed well it's 3 30 it's time to head off to work yeah I'm gonna freaking give her you know might as well I got the old 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 Acer netbook the 1.6 gigahertz atom processor gonna uh, bring that to work and dick around with it might install Linux onto it or something I don't know but uh, definitely do not need it so I figured I might as well put Linux on it to make it actually not completely suck because it's a slow computer but anyway people let's get the frig out of here alrighty people you can probably hear a lot of road noise right now I got the window open it's freaking plus three outside today so this is not gonna freeze at all. God, when I was backing out of my driveway, I had a good scare. I didn't realize the neighbor's garbage can was there and I freaking hit it. All I was, what you doing? And I'm like, oh shit. Thought I just knocked the kid off a bike or something. Oh man, I think I got some e-juice in here that's a little too strong because it's really burning my throat. It's giving me that throat hit that I don't want anymore. I don't need that kind. You know, the throat hit was great when, you're, when you first started vaping trying to get off the cigarettes, but uh, I've been vaping long enough now that I don't want the throat hit anymore. I just want the feeling of the nicotine in my body, but not that much nicotine, you know what I'm saying? Oh, splash. Oh, great. Maybe it's not safe to have my window open as much as I do. Maybe I'll put it right there and see what happens. Just, to, just enough to get the vapor out, because I am using the Nemesis today, and this thing likes to chuck it. Oh, man. Yeah, way too strong of an e-liquid in this thing. I might have to rebuild it and put some six in it. I'm thinking about drilling out the fucking fill hole in the Nemesis 2 so I can use my Yellick Stouts. Uh, stouts? No, Spouts. Because when you order e-liquid from Yellick, they give you those eyedroppers. And they don't fit in the hole on this thing here, but yet they do fit in the hole on the RSST. So it's like, I have a special bottle that has like a pointed head on it. And the pointed head is perfect for filling up this Nemesis. Or Kraken, sorry. Nemesis is the mod, Kraken is the tank. Oh yeah, way too strong, way too strong. Ah oh, well. Going to work, gonna get the shift over soon, the Trans Am can come out and play. That's the rule guys, Trans Am doesn't come out to play until the street sweeper sweeps up all this friggin' gurbly gook friggin' salt. Once they pass, once I see the street sweeper start going, two days after that, I take the car out. That's my simple rule with the Trans Am. Because if you go too soon, all the salt's in the street. Might as well have been driving it all winter. And even though right now you're probably looking at the streets going, well, they don't look too salty at them. Like, they look pretty clear. Well, North Bay uses this stupid new technique. It's a liquid. 
instead of shooting salt bricks all over the place, they spray this friggin' sodium hydroxide liquid. Oh look, a blue box on the road. Car versus blue box? No, nah, better not. Probably fuck up my car. It is a GM product after all. But um, yeah, they spray this like sodium hydroxide all over the ground to basically cause ice to melt. And I know my buddy was passing one of these trucks. He had a 2003 uh, Dodge minivan, uh, caravan. He was passing one of these trucks on the highway and I guess this, the, the spray off of it got his, his van. And sure enough, by the time he got to his desk, he got out of his, his van. The van was a 2000, I think it's 2003, 2004. It was the older style caravan, not the new boxy style, the more bubbly style. Anyway, uh, when he got to his destination, which was Pembroke, he got out and he looks at the side of his van and the whole like rocker's just gone. Like this stuff melted through the metal so fast. It's unbelievable. It's not good for your cars. If he had like a coating on there, it probably would have absorbed it till he washed it off, but it's just junk. Like it works, works great if there's like a, a, a freeze. Like right now we're getting, I'm gonna call it snain because it's like snow rain, but uh, yeah. Oh, I really gotta blow my nose. Can't wait to get to work and blow my nose. That sounds ridiculous, eh? <coughs> Still can't hit this thing, fuck. Uh, just take little toots. That's all I gotta do, take little toots. Don't take great big lung loads. Oh, hey bud. Yeah, that's a big truck in front of me, freak sakes. It's got quite the, uh, the lift on him. That's something else. I've been looking at a lot of used trucks and my buddy contacts me. He's like, hey man, I got an, a 1986 GMC Sierra 1500 for sale. I'm like, okay, well, what does it need for safety? He goes, well, I had it safety like six weeks ago because I just bought it, but I don't really need it. I said, then why the fuck did you buy it? He goes, oh, because I really liked it. I said, well, what's it got for, for specs? So right away he starts with the, oh, it's got the 40 inch mud bog tires and uh, six inch lift kit and just goes on and on and on. And then sends me a picture of him standing by it. And it's like his head comes up to like where the tire fender, like the, the tire wheel well begins. Like this thing's got like, like, hello, Bigfoot called. He wants his freaking ride height back. Like, are you serious? And I'm like, dude, what the hell am I gonna do with that? And he goes, well, you said you wanted a truck. I said, I wanted a truck, not a car crusher. Are you fucking serious right now? I have no idea what I'm gonna do with something that massive. And he's like, well, I'm asking eight G's for it. So if you know anybody looking for one, let me know. And I was like, oh, okay. I said, but honestly, I don't think that's a practical truck. I'm like, can you bring it back to stock? And he goes, are you serious? <laughs> You know, people usually pay to get these lifted trucks. I just want a practical truck. I don't want some fucking 40 inch off the ground monster that uh, in order to fill it, you gotta get a, a funnel and you gotta like aim the gas and like project it in like Angry Birds, you know, because the, the gas, uh, the friggin' nozzle doesn't reach the tanks. It's so damn high and you gotta like step on a stepping stool just to press the button to put the gas in the truck. But to each their own. Some people love those, those lifted rides. For me, it's pointless because I don't ever plan on going mudding or rock crawling or any of that nonsense. If anything, I just plan on driving the truck or driving the car. Or probably I'm just going to end up putting new tires on this thing, get the rims cleaned off, and put new tires onto it, some all seasons, and say fuck winters, and then that'll probably solve my problem. <sighs> and then come winter, what I might do is buy some 16 inch steelies and just put some 16 inch uh, winters on and not use the aluminum rims in the winter because that's part of, probably part of my problem, right there. Oh yeah. Well, I'm hoping today at work things are pretty easy sleazy because um, these past couple days have kind of sucked, I'm gonna be honest. Sweet Jesus, bud. No, that wasn't a motorbike, people. That was a Honda Civic. Are you fucking for real? Sound like he had like a Harley motor in his fucking Honda Civic. Well, his, he had the old G6 exhaust, AKA broken. Ah oh, well, whatever. Whatever, here's another Civic. Let's see if this one here has the same exhaust system or if it's clean. We'll wait till the light turns green. Oh, that's how they're supposed to sound, people. They're supposed to be seen but not heard, you know? Ah oh, well, just getting shit dead. So I still have a whole bunch of friggin' videos I got added up for the gaming channel and just haven't had the will or want to get to it. It's been kind of gloomy lately and when it gets gloomy like this, I get gloomy like this and, and things. 
Uh, I don't know. I'm probably going to hit that tonight when I get home. Finish off rendering and then I got to play some other games and finish off rendering and, and then bring them bring them up to YouTubes and schedule them in and all that nonsense and it's a lot of work. YouTubing is a lot of work. So even though it's a hobby, it's still something like a job because you got to be on it 24/7. Holy fuck, look at the lake here, boys. Look at the lake here. Oh, undercarriage is getting a bath today. The saltiest fucking water known to man. Oh shit, I swore. I've been trying to cut back on the swearing because I've been getting a lot of complaints from people saying that I swear too much. I do not want to park in a puddle, mainly because, oh you sons of bitches, that one's reserved. Uh, tonight is supposed to get colder, and if it does get colder and I'm parked in a puddle, there's an excellent chance my tires will freeze, and some of these puddles are pretty damn deep. You're probably saying, well Adam, why don't you park over there, like straight ahead? Why'd you park over in this lot? Look at the size of that lake over there. Well, you probably can't see it because the way the camera's angled, but um, there's a pretty good pond over there, and if I were to park there, we'd uh, have some problems when it comes time to leave tonight, and I don't want any problems. So anyway, people, I don't know, maybe maybe you can sort of see it now. Let me just pop the screen up and take a look here. I, I don't know, but there's a huge puddle right there, and it's kind of aggressive, so I don't really want to park over there for that reason. I don't even know why I'm running the car right now. I'm just wasting gas, freak sakes. But, um, yeah, I don't really want to park over there for that reason, because uh, if it does freeze tonight, then my car will be stuck here, and I'll have to take a cab home, and I really don't want to deal with that, so freak it. So, anyway, um... I'm at work, so I'm probably just going to call her quits on the vlog for now. So, if you enjoyed this video, I have no idea what the hell I talked about in this video. This video is kind of all over the place, so maybe that's what I'll call it. If you like this video, click the like button. Questions, comments, concerns, you know where to stove them, people. And until next time, keep on vaping.